Welcome to section 1.6, inverse functions. So we're going to find inverse functions algebraically, and we're also going to graph them and talk about um, what we notice about inverse functions when we graph them. First thing is, what is an inverse function? You guys have done a lot of inverse functions before. It's a function that undoes another function. So we'll just look at linear to start off just to show you kind of the idea of how it works. So f of x is equal to x plus 4. Um, what I want to do is I just want to write some ordered pairs of this function. So if I plug in the number 1, the output is 5. If I plug in the number 2, the output is 6. And if I plug in number 3, the output is 7. So I'm just plugging those values in and getting the output. What happens with the inverse? Well, with x plus 4, to undo x plus 4, we subtract 4. What happens to those ordered pairs? Well, I don't want to plug in the numbers 1, 2, and 3 anymore. What I want to do is plug in the output values that I had for that function. So I'm going to plug in 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. I'm going to plug in the output of 6 from the other function, from the original. 6 minus 4 is 2. And if I plug in the last output of 7 from the original function, 7 minus 4 is 3. So when you have two functions, and this isn't, you know, a proof or anything, but when you have two functions and they're inverses of each other, they undo each other, and so what happens with the ordered pairs? So what is the relation between the domain and range of the function and its inverse? Well, if you take a look, the ordered pairs are just switching. So the domain is becoming the range, and the range is becoming the domain. So the domain of the function will be the range of its inverse, and vice versa. And so also, to write an inverse, you do f to the negative 1. Um, and that represents the inverse of a function. You've seen this one with trig, um, sine, of the, uh, sine, cosine, and tangent, and their inverses. Um, so that's really, you know, one of the main things here is that when we look at this, the domain of the function will be the range of its inverse, and those also switch. So anytime we're dealing with inverse functions, um, this is always going to be true. All right. So we said inverse functions undo each other. Well, if that's the case, when you compose two inverses, the result is the input value because it undoes it. So inverse functions, we talked about the other day, f of g of x is equal to g of f of x, or we talked about composition of functions. But with inverses, these compositions will always be equal to each other, but not just equal to each other, they'll be equal to that input value of x. So are these functions inverses of each other? Well, we're just going to prove using compositions that they are inverses of each other or they're not. So we want to find f of g of x. So this would be f of g of x is 5x plus 3 divided by 2. And then we're going to take that function and plug it into f of x. So that will be 2 times, wherever there's an x, we're going to replace it with 5x plus 3. And make sure you get everything else down. So we just replace this x value with all of this. And now we simplify. Well, the 2's cancel. So we're just left with 5x plus 3 minus 3 over 5. Then the 3's cancel, and you're left with 5x over 5. And 5x divided by 5 is just x. So f of g of x is equal to x. So that one works. Now it doesn't mean the other one um, works. we got to check it also. So we're also going to find g of f of x as well. And so now this one would be g of the f of x function, which is 2x minus 3 over 5. And we're going to take that value of x in the g function and replace it with all of that. And that will leave us with 5 times all of that. 2x minus 3 over 5 plus 3 over 2. And then we'll simplify. The 5's cancel. 2x minus 3 plus 3 
over 2 and you can kind of see the same thing happen. You get 2x over 2 and so it's equal to x. So g of f of x is equal to x. So the question was are these functions inverses of each other? And the answer is yes. f of x and g of x are inverses are inverse functions and so that's one way to prove that functions are inverses of each other all right the next thing that we're going to look at is we're going to actually look at the graph so i have a graph of a function here um, and they're just points on a graph and what I want to do is I want to take that idea and I want you to find you know, you know we'll call those your your f of x points um, and then I want you to plot the g of x I want you to plot its inverse well the nice thing about inverse functions is the domain and range just switch so this ordered pair right here at 0 3 alright now becomes 3 0 so all we did was switch the order pair so take all those points and just switch the x and y values in terms of its domain and range and let's see what happens so I'm just going to label the points right now and then do it So hopefully I have counted correctly on those. And then now we're just going to switch them. So 0, 3 becomes 3, uh, three 0. 4, 5 becomes 5, 4. One seven becomes 7, 1. Eight eighteen becomes 18, 8. 14, 17 becomes 17, 14. All right. And if you look at those points, what do you notice about those points? What is happening? All right. Well, one thing that you might either remember or you might see is that there's a reflection. And this line that it reflects across is the line y equals x. So inverse functions are symmetrical about the line y equals x. And so the other thing is now that we found out, now we know inverse functions undo each other. We know the domain and range switch, but now we also know in terms of the graph it's always symmetric to the line y equals x. That's what happens when you switch your domain and range values. And so that's going to be an important point as we move forward here. Kind of in another way we can actually check to see whether our functions are inverses. Um, and one of the things I will show you guys in class is dealing with the graphing calculator and plugging some of this stuff in so you can see. All right, so we've um, we've done a couple of things now. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is we're going to find the inverse algebraically. So to do that, a couple of things we have to go over. To have an inverse function, it must be one to one. So not all functions have inverses that are also functions. It must be one to one. Well, what does that mean? One to one is that no two elements of the domain correspond to the same element of the range. So if you read that, it's kind of the um, I don't want to say the opposite, but going backwards from the vertical line test, where it's the other way around. You can only have one x value, um, one x value to every x value is mapped to one y value, and so you can't have an x going to two different y's. Well, now this one is saying the other thing. So the vertical line test can help you determine whether a relation is a function 
that says is a function got messed up it looks like um, and then a horizontal line test helps you determine whether the inverse of a function once again that says the inverse of a function is a function so we need to know whether the inverse of a function is also a function and then we know uh, it has an inverse so we want to check to make sure every function that we deal with is one to one so for example parabola pretty standard problem that we deal with a lot is a parabola or is a quadratic a one to one function well we know it passes the vertical line test so we can move this anywhere we want and every x value has its own y but then if we take this line and we make it horizontal does it pass the horizontal line test and the answer is no you can see that there's two y values so that's an issue in terms of finding the inverse it's not a one-to-one -one function to make it one-to-one -one, and you guys might remember this if you've taken trig is that you have to sometimes get rid of part of the function to make it a one-to-one -one function and so now this is one-to-one -one, and now we can find its inverse and that's exactly what you guys did with your trig functions so let's take a look in terms of algebra what what this entails so to find the inverse algebraically you know if you think about this our ordered pairs x y become y x so we do the same thing in algebra is that we take and we replace the f of x with y because we don't want to deal with it as a function and then we're going to interchange we're just going to switch our x and y values which is what we did with the ordered pairs but now our y is not solved for so then we have to solve for the y value and just make sure at the very end re you replace it and basically notation wise is that you're writing it as an inverse to indicate that it's not the function but it's the inverse of that function so let's take a look at two examples um, and these are probably two more challenging examples um, you know we did linear or something like that would be a little bit easier but let's take a look at these two so f of x equals the square root of 2x minus 1 well you know to look at this this is um, 1 to 1 square root function looks like this so it passes the horizontal and vertical line test so we know that it's um, that we can find the inverse of this function so let's kind of go through this process. We're going to take the y equals to the square root of 2x minus 1. Replace the x and y. And then solve for y. Well, to solve for y, we're going to square both sides to get rid of the square root so we can get to the y value. Then you can add 1 and then divide by 2. And so we would say that the inverse of this original function is x squared plus 1 over 2. Now, at this point, you know, a lot of us would just stop and be like, okay, I did the algebra, I'm good to go. But we do actually have a slight problem. Um, if I can pull up the graphing calculator here. Um, when you go to plug this in, all right, if we plug in the original, which is the square root of 2x minus 1. So we have that one. Okay, there's your square root. Zoom in a little bit more here. Um, and then we go and we also plug in its inverse, which is x squared sure I put it in parentheses x squared plus 1 divided by 2 and we graph that um, I wonder if I can maybe get this on the whole screen just a second 